All right, today I'm going to disconnect the hydraulic lines. All right, and as I suspected, no fluid leakage whatsoever because uh, fluid doesn't flow uphill, and this is clearly higher than the top of the reservoir, so don't have to worry about draining the entire hydraulic system just to disconnect these lines. So the next thing I've got to do, uh, of course I'm going to cap these lines off to keep any dirt from going down them. But uh, next thing I'm going to actually attempt to do is I'm going to try and take these three bolts out right here and see if this bolster assembly uh, will come off the top of the steering valve. All right, that was a piece of cake. These three long bolts that go right through the steering valve and actually also bolt the steering valve down to this lower pedestal section. Come right out and then uh, this whole assembly comes right off. You've got an O-ring in here the purposes of sealing and we've got this special star washer and then you've got the looks like that's a thrust washer there and then that looks like that might be the upper half of the bearing race you get another o-ring in there and then maybe that's the lower half of the bearing race there for the for the upper bearing assembly hmm if that's the bearing assembly it doesn't rotate seems to me like it should all right I'll cross that mystery when we come to it uh, I gotta bang this tang down on this star washer all right, I loosened that nut, used a giant pair of channel locks on it. It wasn't too tight. Interestingly enough, though, uh, as soon as I loosened it, this assembly started moving. I'm wondering if this nut was over-tightened. The um, guy I bought this from said that he had just supposedly repaired the steering and that it only worked a very short time or didn't work at all, and then he gave up on it. Mm. So I'm going to look for things that just don't look like they were put back together correctly and See if that might be, you know, part of why it wasn't working for him. The, uh, I think it was this one here. It seemed like it had excessive play in it. I don't know why he wouldn't have replaced that bushing. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, so then next, this uh, star washer comes off. And then we got, looks like we got a shim. No, that's another washer. Ah, now we've got a thrust washer. Oh, look at those tiny needle bearings. There's your... Boy, that's your bearing? Wow. That's something. All right, so there's this little tiny bearing deal here. Wafer thin, tiny roller bearing. It's not what I expected to find in here, actually. For some reason, I thought from the parts description and IT manual instructions, I thought I was going to find a ball bearing assembly, an upper lower race, and we actually took it out and had loose ball bearings that you had to deal with. Huh. All right, and then we got, looks like there's another spacer here. And I take that off and clean it up. All right, so this has got an O-ring on it right there. I tell you, that O-ring looks like it's just lost in that groove. I wonder if that's the wrong sized O-ring in there. Or if it's supposed to be that by design. Then you get a groove on the bottom here. And there's this O-ring, same situation, the O-ring's so small compared to the groove, it just uh, fell out. And that must be, I can imagine putting that back in is uh, fun because it's going to want to fall out every time you put it on the, let's see. Every time you put this O-ring on here and you turn it over, and, well, I guess it stays in there well enough. You could always use a little grease too. But anyways, that's where that O-ring bits. Still don't quite know what this deal is on this thing. It's got some holes going through it to get oil flowing through it to lubricate. 
shaking it. Doesn't sound like it's got any ball bearings in it. Feels like it's just a solid puck. Hmm. All right, here's uh, these little pistons, plungers they call them. Now they should be a plunger, and then underneath that there should be a spring, and then there's another plunger at the other end. That's the one, two, three captive plungers, and then when we take this apart on the back side, there should be uh, active plungers, I mean, and then when we take this apart, there should be, I believe, here and here, there should be inactive plungers, which I'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to drop off these two lines that go to the piston. All right, now I'm going to take these lines off. Now it appears to me this line right here is original goes down to the piston, it's a rigid line, and I think there was probably another rigid line that went down here, and at some point they had to replace it, and they just replaced it with a short hydraulic hose, which they didn't even bother putting on a uh, 90 degree fitting here and having it come down and drop right down. So they end up with this weird big bow right here, which by putting this big bow, that pretty much stops you from being able to put your battery down uh, there, which I think this is where the battery is supposed to go. This kind of gets in the way. Uh, so I might want to correct that at some point. But for right now, I'm just going to remove it. All right, I just removed that valve assembly. Uh, got an O-ring in this outer groove. Got an O-ring in the inner groove. And then there's a groove in the middle here that has nothing in it. So I'm wondering about that groove. Here's the valve assembly. Here's the side that was facing down. I see three plungers there. But those three plungers look like they line up with the other plungers. So if those are all the active plungers, I wonder where the inactive plungers are that I saw described in the uh, manual. Huh. Okay. So another mystery. Kind of think of it. I expected there to be a bearing on the bottom too from what I saw described in the manual. So, hmm. Yeah, I just went and looked at the parts breakdown online to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. And it turns out that this is exactly the bearing that should be in there. Uh, it actually says needle bearing. So the IT manual talks about this bearing in a different way that makes me think it's an older version of talking about maybe with ball bearings that you held in with grease during reassembly, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so this is the needle bearing, and then this thing that I call the thrush, thrust washer is actually the outer race for the needle bearing. And this big thing right here is the inner race for the needle bearing. And then this whole setup with this, this, and this is supposed to be repeated under here. So that makes me think that it's actually in there on one of these sides and pressed in. Hello. Alright. More confusion. There's no there's no bearing there. What the hell's going on here? Why isn't there another bearing here? Or is that it right there? Oh, I wonder if that's it right there. I ain't turning. Uh, huh. Oh, and then there's the other mystery, which is the uh, plungers. There are six active plungers, which there's three short ones on this side. Then underneath each one of those three is a little spring. And then on the other side, down the bottom of the hole, are three other there's your six active plungers. According to the parts breakdown, there are two inactive plungers, which would be solid plungers that go all the way through. They don't exist. So, again, could this be a later series in which they omitted the solid inactive plungers? What's their purpose? Do they not even need to be there? Is that maybe why they were omitted? <laughs> I don't know. But this is definitely the uh, side that faces up. 
and there is a groove in the top of the spool. You see it right there. You can actually see that groove inside there. That is facing up, and I believe in the service manual it does talk about that that needs to face up. So now that I know that that faces up, I should be able to push this spool out of this housing. All right, it pushed up about an eighth of an inch and stopped dead. Let me try and push it out the other way. Well, that's not coming out easily, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to remove the plunges here because they're ready to fall out before I lose them. So I'm going to take out the little plunges and the springs. And this is interesting. Uh, the plungers that go in that port that I took that's wide open right now, they slid all the way through, no problem. These two plungers on this side, I got the plungers out on the other side and the springs have popped out. But those plungers don't easily move all the way through like the other, like the other ones did. So I wonder if those were a little bit, uh, I wonder if those have any damage on them. Wow, here's the spring in one of those holes that uh, wasn't moving very freely. You could see all of the garbage. And the last thing you want to see is contaminants, particles in your hydraulic system. And this just looks awful. Uh, right there, there's a bunch of crud. Looks like it might be corrosion. Not sure. But that's a shame. Um, I'll give you an example. This is the other one, a lot cleaner. And then this one down here, I could just see a big pile of something in there. So I'm gonna push that one out, see what comes out. Oh, this is the plunger from the first one that was sticking a little bit. You can see there's some garbage right on top there. The good news is the side doesn't look pitted or damaged. So, let's see. I'm going to put the camera down so I can catch whatever comes out of this thing. A little bit of crud on there, but more importantly, I can see down through that hole, there's crud in that port. So that's definitely going to have to be well cleaned, to say the least. Oh, phone call. All right, this cylinder's a really tight fit, but I'm tapping it out slowly, and it's coming out. more problems with contamination here inside this spool just knocked the spool loose and you can see in there there's some uh, contaminants I'm not sure what that is it's yeah it looks like that's rust that's probably water in the hydraulic fluid that sat in there and did that I was able to clean the heaviest crud off now when I clean all these parts later on with solvent we'll see how bad they are yeah, I just stuck the screwdriver in here and sure enough that's wiggling around so that's the inner race for the bottom um, bearing so that other needle bearing is going to be underneath here.